What's up guys, Brian's here. Today's Thursday, September 5th, 2024. We're going to keep today's video pretty brief as we're going to really just focus in on the SPX, more specifically the quant trading app SPX trade engines data feed. So I've went ahead and pulled all of these images here into a video format in which we will review the tape and kind of analyze what happens with price action as if we were watching it back in real time. This is the 15 minute time frame on the Thinkorswim platform here. The levels that you see on the charts come from the quant trading app script. If you haven't heard of Quant Trading App, link is in the description to the website in which you can find out more information. I am the lead developer at Quant Trading App, and to abbreviate Quant Trading App, I'll be referring to it as QTA for this video. QTA is a program that takes a lot of complex data and tries to simplify it as best as possible for traders so we can really focus in on price action we will come back to think of swim in a few minutes, but for the most part, I really want to focus in on the tape here. So this is the same information in the video format. This is five minutes after the market opens. The significant things to take away from this is the fact that the power strike, which is a QTA proprietary level, is also at the same strike as the absolute gamma. So this is 500. The power strike is also at 500. We can see the dash here in the background that's letting us know it is the absolute gamma strike. Whenever these two are latched together, it tends to act as a magnet for price action. However, it's only five minutes into the opening session, so it's still a little early. I wouldn't really act on this just yet. It's best to wait for some sort of confluence that you can see on your chart. In other words, if we were to continue to play this out, I just press play, we can see prices just bouncing around, bouncing around, and here we go. So this is now 10.05 Eastern time, and we have price approaching a key level here. This is our one sigma close. So what QTA is telling us is for a day like today, this is usually where the market would close if it goes up. Down here, we see a negative one sigma close. It is behind the one sigma range as these levels are stacked on top of each other. It's letting us know if the market was to go down on a day like today, this would generally be where it would close. And then on the other end, it's telling us this is the expected move for the day. So this is coming from options information, and this is the ex expected move to the downside here for today. So the one standard deviation expected move down, and this is our one standard deviation move expected up. These are important strikes that we want to be aware of. When price is just floating in the middle of nowhere, so let's just say it's in the middle of here, it's not around any of these key levels that we can really use as a level to risk off of as these are the strike prices in which we have a large edge. This is an interesting point in time as the SPX at this point is up about 20 points on the day. However, the power strike and the absolute gamma strike have not budged. Normally, if we see a move like this, 15, 20 points up in one direction, we'll see the absolute gamma strike maybe bounce up to here. We'll see the power strike maybe bounce up to here also, but they did not move today. That's not a good sign if you are a bull as we are coming into a level of potential resistance. 515 is the strike price with the highest amount of negative gamma. And then down here, we see that 500 is also the strike price that has the highest amount of put volume. There's a lot of volume coming into this strike. There's a lot of absolute gamma in this strike and the power strike is still down here. Members in Quant Trading app, we also have this confluence on, on our chart as this is the QTA intraday zone. These levels are plotted on our charts automatically after the market opens. The script is generated from pre-market. We copy and paste it into our Thinkorswim platform or our trading view platform and it automatically plots these levels on our chart. It's important for SPX traders to also have the SPY up. This is showing confluence as the intraday zone for the SPY is also up here we can see this sharp rejection that happens. The 15 minute candle did not close above this zone. This is our SPX. We're seeing a strong rejection off of the zone. So as we continue to play the tape out here, this is our rejection that happened around 10, 15 Eastern time. As we continue to play it out, price tries to bounce back up, trying to break out of the one Sigma close strike, and it does not break past it. It gets rejected again. These wicks right here are telling us who's being more aggressive as we can't get a 15 minute candle close above this significant strike of 540. At the same time, if we take a look at the Qs, which is also important to have up as an SPX trader, the stocks in the NASDAQ heavily influence the S&P 500 also. This is letting us know this is the absolute gamma strike for the QQQ. These levels are all coming from the QTA intraday script. This is letting us know this is a key area of interest. 465 on the queues is going to be a difficult level for it to break past. There was more momentum to start the day for the NASDAQ. However, it was greeted with 
significant resistance at the same time the SPY was getting greeted with resistance, the same time the SPX was, and similar with the ES, but I'm going to leave the ES out of this video for purposes of time. What we are also taking note of is the fact that the power strike and the absolute gamma strike have not moved. That can be used as confluence if you are thinking to go short. The reasons in this case here, if you're thinking to short at this level is boom, this hard rejection right here. Boom, you see another hard rejection. You're being patient and letting these 15 minute candles close. We're noticing that nothing is budging down here. The only thing the bulls will really have at their side is maybe the max pain strike up here at 550, but max pain in isolation by itself is not that important. It's only if there's confluence with it. So if it's max pain lined up with the power strike or the absolute gamma strike, that's when we can put some weight on it. But when it's just by itself, it's not really a strike that's used as a target. And that can go for almost any strike. You don't really wanna put much weight on anything in isolation. It's all about confluence and being able to layer context around your reasons for taking a trade. So let's play out the tape here and we see this sharp rejection and price comes down to the highest negative gamma strike and actually breaks past it. That's not very common, but that's letting us know how aggressive this sell off is. But it shouldn't be that surprising considering, again, the power and the absolute gamma strike have not moved. As we continue to play the tape out here, if you see this type of price action and you decided to go long, this isn't really something that you can say is a bad trade because we can see that there's a lot of support levels stacked right here. And you could be telling yourself maybe you're going to scalp back up to 515. However, in this case, the momentum was just way too strong to the downside and price actually blew past these levels. Now that we are at the expected move from the open to the downside, this is our last real support level level here from the perspective of the QTA trade engine. With these levels still stacked together, the expectation would be it's going to act as a magnet and pull price back up towards this level. Unless we saw the absolute gamma strike also drop or maybe the power strike dropped. But again, they're staying here. They're staying put. That's the importance of what I'm trying to highlight in this video. So we can see price is stalling out around here. It's losing steam as it's struggling to go lower. And price does recover and go back up to this power strike. At this point, this support area should act as resistance because the support broke earlier in the day and now it's acting as resistance. And we get this first sign of a rejection here. As we continue to play things out, we can see this level still act as support before price ultimately breaks back over it. But for the most part, it's just oscillating around this 500 level because of the combination of these two levels lining up. We see at this point, the absolute gamma strike did bounce up a little bit, but it came right back down and and remain at the 500 level until the end of the day. So I'm just gonna let this play out as we can see price is just being choppy, choppy, choppy and end up closing right around this 500 strike here. The important lesson I'm trying to highlight for QTA members is when you see these two levels latched onto each other right here, that's when you can expect it to be a magnet. That's when you can look into maybe trading an iron condor around this region, maybe an iron butterfly around this region. This is where if you trade directionally, you can maybe look to get some puts if price is all the way up here at a key level such as the one sigma close your expectation would be it will pull back down it doesn't always go all the way right back down to it sometimes it might stall out around the neutral strike or it might stall out around the highest negative put strike which early in the day would have been right around here this would have been a viable profit target for a short trade at this point in time from here as always, what other confluences did we have? If we were just to take a look at early in the day, what was our gamma exposure? So here's 10 a.m. Eastern time. We can see this massive amount of gamma right here, 515. This is why it was the highest negative GEX strike on the trade engine's graph. We can see the absolute gamma strike right here. The SPX is in an overall net negative gamma environment. That's why these bars are red. Whenever we see this as red, the really large strikes are going to act as some sort of a magnet for price unless we see implied volatility decreasing. If we see implied volatility decreasing, then we can expect price to return to positive gamma. Where did the market stall out here today? Right within this area here. So the high of the day was right here between that 540 and that 545 range. That's right here, 540 and 545 range. It's right when the negative gamma turns positive. As I've mentioned in many videos at this time, this transition area will act as a support 
or resistance level depending on where price is. So if price is down here and we see the market flying up, we can expect it to struggle around here. If the market was all the way up here and then it dropped down to this area, we would expect it to struggle to go lower around here. It might consolidate and chop around the area for a bit before it continues going down. The same thing as if it was going up today, it might have gone up, it would have been choppy in this area for a bit, and then it would continue going up. That chop can sometimes be about 30 minutes to 60 minutes, and that's enough to scalp about a $1 move on a zero DTE iron butterfly. You can just add that to your toolkit. That's coming straight from my personal experience. As it is a trade, I will look to run frequently if I can find some sort of additional confluence or if I don't have any other conflicting positions already open. Hopefully by watching multiple videos, a lot of this is starting to make sense to you guys. This is really supposed to make things very simple or if you have a full-time job or you're very busy and you don't have time to really analyze a lot of data, this graph right here is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. It's doing a lot of the calculations that any zero DTE SPX trader would need to make a decision. Every five minutes, it's sending this information to this channel and our zero DTE gamma exposure feed is also printing out here. So you don't even need to switch between the two channels. This will be the only channel I will have up and I will just have it running in the background. And if I'm on the go, I use the mobile channel as this is more so calibrated for your phone. You can just open this on your mobile device and it should take up majority of your screen, making it easier to see. It's all meant to help traders get in and get out with your decision making. The SPX is at the Quant Trading App intraday zone. This is a transition area for the gamma exposure. The power strike and the absolute gamma strike is all the way down here. The Qs is at potential resistance. The, the SPY is at its intraday zone. Check, 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 check. You're just going right down the list. You have 15 to 35 minutes or so to decide if you want to get in the trade. Grab some puts, grab an out the money put butterfly, sell some calls, whatever your method is for trading. This is letting you know there's opportunity here and is your time to act as the risk is low. If the market did continue to go higher, it's a small stop loss so you can scale in a little bit more with the expectation that price might reverse back at least to the opening price unless the absolute gamma strike or the power strike moved up. That would have been our indication to get out of a short position here. If you're interested in more information for Quant Trading App, again, link is in the description down below. Leave a comment, like the video, share it if you learned something, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.